We have a question from Frank in Woodstock. He asks, how do bonds pay interest? Well, Frank, bonds pay interest in accordance to the frequency and amount as stated for that particular security. So it's on a security by security basis. Rather than tell you about how just one bond pays interest, let's give a brief overview of really what a bond is and what determines that interest payment. Bonds are debt securities issued by various governments and corporations in order to raise money for a number of different projects. For example, let's say a city may need to raise funds to build a bridge or a corporation like Apple may need to borrow some money to fund and develop a new product, let's say the Apple car that everyone has been talking about for some time. While there are many different types of bonds and notes are the same typically, they are issued for a defined period of time and at either a variable or fixed rate of interest that the borrower promises to pay the bondholder periodically. The frequency of payment varies from bond to bond, as does the amount of that payment. Now, in most cases, the periodic interest payment, or what's called the coupon payment, is made on a semi-annual basis. That word coupon comes from the days when an actual paper bond was presented to the purchaser. Attached would be a series of actual clippable coupons that could be redeemed for the cash value of that interest payment when it was due. While those days are long gone, the term coupon does still remain. So why do some bonds have higher coupon rates than others? Well, bonds can have a different coupon rate for a number of different reasons, but most likely it's a result of when that bond was issued and the credit worthiness of that issuer, both of which are components uh, of risk as it pertains to bonds. Bonds issued in more recent years most likely have a lower coupon than those, say, were issued 10 years ago, and that's mostly a function of the Fed's recent action to lower benchmark interest rates. Uh, to historic lows as well as market conditions. So as you've likely heard, uh, the Fed lowered rates following the financial crisis were still in a low interest rate environment uh, compared to history, that is. These benchmark rates are basically what interest rates for a bond are based off of. Also, some governments and corporations are less risky than others, meaning they have a stronger balance sheet and therefore greater ability to service their debt, making them less risky. As a result, investors are compensated uh, more highly when they take on more risk, less highly when they take on less risk. Like I said before, in some cases, bonds don't pay a coupon. These bonds are called zero coupon bonds, and instead they issue at a steep discount to par value, and they later mature at par value. While the bondholder doesn't receive periodic coupon payments, they do receive a lump sum payment at maturity, and that's going to be far in excess of the amount for which they purchased the bond. So let's understand exactly how a bond pays interest by looking at a couple of examples. So let's say you bought a municipal bond with a face value of $1,000, and that bond pays a 5% semi-annual coupon and matures December 31st of 2025. Every six months, you're going to receive a $25 coupon. That's 5% of $1,000 paid out in two payments each year, and that's how you arrive at your $25. These payments would continue every six months until December 31st of 2025, the final maturity, when you would receive your last $25 coupon payment in addition to your $1,000 initial investment. Now, a savings bond operates a little differently. In fact, they operate like a zero coupon bond. So let's say I purchased a $50 savings bond in 2015 that matures 20 years from now in 2035. That bond would cost me much less than the $50. Let's say it would cost me about $25. I would receive no coupons ever, but in 2035 when that bond matures, I would receive $50 instead of my initial investment of $25. I won't bore you with the math behind it, but this situation basically nets the investor about 3.5% per year. So Frank, you're probably wondering why people would actually want to buy bonds after I just told you rates from your historical lows. And it's for a number of reasons, but for starters, bonds provide a predictable stream of income that other investments such as stocks don't. And that's incredibly important, especially to those people near retirement or actually in retirement. Bonds also provide a way to diversify an investor's portfolio thanks to their different characteristics versus stocks. Some bonds also have tax advantages, allowing the holder of the bonds to receive tax-free income via the coupon. These types of bonds are typically municipal bonds. Now, while all investments have risks, bonds are generally considered less risky than stocks, but as I said, that's not without risk. So some of the risks that are seen in bonds are credit risk or the likelihood that the issuer may fail to make its interest payments or principal payments and thus default on the bond is probably the biggest risk, especially among corporate bonds. Other risks include interest rate risk, which can affect bond prices depending on whether or not the interest rates are moving higher or lower. If rates move higher, the price of the bond is going to fall in order to compensate for higher rates available in the market. If rates move lower, the price of the bond will appreciate for the exact opposite reason. Another risk to consider is liquidity risk. 
The bond market's far less liquid than the stock market, and at times, selling a bond can be very difficult. It's not just like going in there and placing a market order to sell a stock. If a buyer can't quickly be found for your bond, you might be forced to hold the bond or sell it at a steep discount just to attract a buyer into the market to purchase it. It's our practices here at Hensler Financial to purchase bonds to meet our clients' spending needs and hold those bonds to maturity. By doing this, you eliminate the risk of having to sell your bond at a discount as a result of interest rate movements or even selling it as a discount because you're unable to find a willing buyer. Frank, I hope you found this helpful in understanding the basics of bonds and how bonds pay interest.